Hi there, my name is Mika Pagani. I'm a graduate student under Dr. Kuhar's Vegetable Insect Pest Research Lab here with Virginia Tech Entomology. Uh, something I do as a graduate student is I am currently looking at fungal-based control methods for wireworms. That is the larval stage of the click beetle, which is a notorious pest for agricultural uh, crops. That includes crops like potatoes, carrots, tuber crops, things like that. Um, something that I'm doing with this fungal-based control methods is I'm taking naturally occurring fungus from the field, things that you guys would be uh, familiar with, and I'm taking it here to the lab and I'm putting it on Petri plates and I'm trying to narrow down the best strain to use that I can and then send back to you guys in the field that would hopefully kill off any pest populations. So what are wireworms? Wireworms are the common name for the larval stage of a click beetle. As their name implies, these are beetles that have a morphologically distinct clicking mechanism. The species I focus on in my research and a dominant species found in Virginia is called Melanotus communis. These are beetles with brown and elongate bodies as seen in the center picture. Click beetles possess a notch on their thoracic segment, so whenever threatened, they can flex their exoskeleton in a way which then snaps or catapults them in the air to scare away predators. Now, as we ease into the end of summer, you may see them congregating on flowers feeding on pollen or frequent your porch lights during the night. Adult females choose to lay eggs in grassy wheat fields due to their favorable low-lying area conditions that are rich in organic matter. Now, unlike their adult counterparts, wireworms are opportunistic feeders that spend multiple years in the soil feeding off of subterranean plant parts before they pupate. For example, my species of interest, Melanotus communis, may spend up to six years underground. During that time, they can get a hold of whatever food they come in contact with. Often tuber crops like potatoes, beets, and carrots, or root and stem systems like corn crops are vulnerable to this pest. Wireworms are even known to resort to cannibalistic behavior when little resources are in store. The characteristic pinholes that are evident of tunnel damage may decrease market yield and they also increase the crop susceptibility to phytopathogens. Now, some of the challenges that growers are presented with when faced with wireworms are the few management options against this pest. And although quite successful at suppressing insects, as depicted in this graph on the right, organophosphates and carbamates were found to be toxic to vertebrates. These traditional broad-spectrum nerve poisons are now prohibited due to their hazardous nature. Done in a separate study with potato tubers, the majority of control came from the initial migration that fed on chemically treated pieces. But considering their subterranean nature of wireworms, which leads them to migrate upwards towards the crop later in the season, more damage was caused as tubers stayed longer in the ground. So through their ability to burrow meters deep beneath the soil, thereby avoiding chemical controls, there is very little control for the late season offspring tubers as other cohorts of wireworms migrate. So a new integrated pest management plan is urgently needed. So with my project, I want to find control methods against this notorious agricultural pest that are both safe to us in our environment as well as reliable methods for growers that will help them recover from the downfall this pest brings. And with the use of fungal-based control methods, it allows an added option within the agricultural industry. With further research, growers can then integrate the use of naturally occurring enemies into their existing pest management protocol where they see fit and to be used in combination with other techniques. Now, two of the prominent species that my work focuses on are Metarhizium anisoplae, this pictured on the left, which characterized by the green sporulation that you can see on this cadaver here, and also Bavaria bassiana, another species depicted on the right, with their snowball-like appearance and sporulation on this cadaver. Now, my aim is to utilize the inherent capabilities of enema pathogenic fungus that is to weaponize against pest populations 
by taking these naturally occurring fungus from the field sites and then conducting lab studies to further understand their efficacy given various environmental factors, thereby limiting unforeseen conditions which they are used to be in later field trials. By isolating on Petri plate the scene here, I am able to not only detect what's already present in the field site soil, but I can also compare with a variety of commercially available strains to later narrow down the best candidate for the field. And the best candidate will yield the most efficacious results showing high fungal sporulation rates as indicated through this clip, which shows infected cadavers using the fungus that was shown before. And aside from my work in the lab with insect pathology, I'm also looking at the use of bionematicides and pheromone traps against wireworms as alternative management methods. The bionematicide called magistine contains a bacteria-based non-living active ingredient, which is Burkholderia. This can work against eggs, juveniles, and adults of nematodes. And after a field trial that showed promising results against wireworms, we are currently looking further into its efficacy in potato systems. Being that it's derived from bacteria and plants, it is better for human safety and can be used in organic agriculture with fewer non-target effects. In addition to this alternative method, I'm also evaluating sex pheromone beta traps in the southwestern region of Virginia. This can aid with the development for monitoring and management programs using this Vernon pitfall traps with combination of pheromones. Thank you for joining me today. If you need to contact me for any reason, feel free to use the information above.